Hello. Uh, I realise this is the weekly virtual cafe in the Menopause Anxiety Freedom Group. We do it every week. Uh, but what I have forgotten to do, uh, because partly it's a bank holiday, and and I said <laughs> I said to my VA last week, "Oh no, you know I'll take care of the last few for the uh, posts that she was going to prepare for me for the rest of the month," and came on to do the event today having already trailed said event on Instagram, as I sometimes do, to discover that we hadn't actually created anything at all. Um, completely my fault. So this will hardly be a, a cafe with guests uh, unless someone just suddenly picks up and thinks, oh, yes, I'm not doing anything right now and jumps in, in which case, lovely. If not, it's just going to get me a bit of a monologue. But fortunately, I did have in mind something that I wanted to share with you. I'm just going to reduce this view because honestly, when I'm looking at myself, oh, I say, I seem to have my underwear on display. Um, yeah, when I look at myself large on the screen, it's too much. Um, so what I was going to talk about today was when, you know, the cliche or, or not cliche, the saying, um, a problem shared is a problem halved certainly a saying I grew up with and I think lots of us have grown up with that phrase and it has a huge amount of truth in it I'm having the tea because remember this is a virtual cafe um when it comes to our mental well-being of course it does make sense you know that we move away from that place of uh pretend everything's okay it's all okay no problem here mm, I'm fine I'm fine uh, to actually sharing if, if, we're, if we're struggling and something is a problem for us. So this is not about denying that particular phrase. It's not about saying uh, that's all wrong, it's a lie, keep your problems to yourself because you're just going to make them worse. Not entirely. So yes, like many things, when you do them in moderation, they're kind of good. And when you go out of control with it, they're not so good. And sharing a problem is no different to, for example, you know, having uh, 20 drinks instead of one, um, you know, eating the whole cake instead of a slice. It, it has that same capacity for excess and for harm for self-harm but why why would that be the case if I can share a problem and I feel like in the moment I've got that off my chest and I feel better why would it feel worse if I do that again and then again and then again and and also why am I bringing this up here in a menopause anxiety freedom group why is it specifically relevant here so first of all let me let me tell you why it's a problem and I'll try to remember the other bit <laughs> later I'll remember it at some point so the reason it is a problem da, 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 dramatic pause for tea I've nearly finished I can't bear cold tea I just it's horrible I have to drink tea when it's hot okay so when we share a problem the first time it's like oh my goodness it's a weight off of our shoulders you know it's really a, a release it's thank goodness why was I keeping that cooped up for so long uh, and obviously we need to be careful with whom we share that we need to know that the person that is receiving the sharing is 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 a good receptacle if you like it is not going to dive in with oh why don't you do this why don't you do that well uh, you know, helpful, well-intentioned advice uh, isn't always the best response that you need when you're sharing a problem. But that aside, let's assume oh, there's all stuff going on in the background of the Zoom. Let me shut that down. Shut that down. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, no, there we are. Um, oh, wouldn't you know it? I knew that would happen. That's a phone call that I'm just ignoring. All happens, doesn't it? Always the same. So 
let's assume you shared it, you shared it with someone who's really helped you feel better. They've just listened. They've just, they've not, you know, maybe it's your partner or your best friend and they've done absolutely the right thing. They've just been there for you. They've just heard what you've got to say. They've not challenged you. They've maybe provided a tiny bit of guidance, but that's it. All good so far. But what can happen, especially when you start, so this is where we get in the chicken and egg, the circular flow, the downward spiral, the vortex of menopause anxiety or any type of anxiety is it can start to suck us under. And, you know, when I talk about the chicken and egg, it's like, well, where did this start? At what point did me feeling a worry turn into a repetitive, deepening, strengthening cycle of worry. One worry leading to another. What if, if only we're familiar with that kind of experience? When does that happen? Well, the truth is you, you don't know exactly when it happens, but I'll tell you what makes it worse. So I'm not going to say, OK, you can prevent ever having any anxiety if you just share your problems once and get on with it. Although. Hmm, there's probably something in that growth mindset would probably suggest if you could strengthen and develop your own growth mindset, which is a whole different story, then that may well be true. You share it once, you consider, you step back, maybe you meditate and you go, oh, everything looks clearer now, move on, next. But we know we wouldn't be here in this community. We wouldn't be recognizing that phrase, menopause anxiety, and getting that whole uh, sense of familiarity of, oh, that resonates, um, that uncomfortable feeling of fitting in in a place that really you'd rather not fit into, but you do. If we were good at the whole growth mindset thing and letting go of things. So, what happens is we dwell on the problem. And what the reason, I know I'm going to loop back on myself in a minute, because I said to you, I'd tell you why it was a problem. The reason it's a problem is it feeds on itself. And the more the single problem feeds on itself, it then generates a thought about another problem. So we start with one. Let's say, for example, I start with a problem that, oh my goodness, I'm running late for the virtual cafe single worry, single concern, no big deal really. Um, but then I jump online and I go to start the virtual cafe, like literally with seconds to spare. Thinking, oh, I've made it, I've made it. But then I discovered I didn't actually create the event in the first place. Oh my goodness. Now I've got another worry. It's like, oh, you know, why did you leave this to the last? So, so we're now feeding a worry. Why did you leave this to the last minute? Oh my goodness, why did you tell the VA that you were going to do this because you haven't done it? And if she'd done it, it would all be fine. So I'm starting to add stories to the original, simple, I'm late, I'm late for the event. And then the second discovery, which is, oh, I haven't actually created it. So I start to tell a story. Oh, if if I, you know, not said that, then she would have done this. Why did I do that? Oh, my goodness. What will people think? What if there's people like no one's going to come? Oh, my God. If, if nobody comes and it's not a cafe and it's all, it's all gone horribly wrong. And, and yet I could start to tell myself a story about how this community won't work, how nobody will ever show up. You know, I'm unreliable. Um that unless I can be completely right, you know, I could start telling stories about what that says about me as a person, how I can't be trusted, how I can't do anything right. I knew you wouldn't be able to do this. You forget everything, you're worthless. And we start to tell a bigger and a bigger story. And as you hear me say that, you know I'm talking about this specific thing, but maybe it triggers in you similar circumstances, just small things, small things that you might have thought in the past wouldn't have worried you, or you might start telling yourself a story, yeah, but I wouldn't have done it then because I'd have done this and I'd have done that and I wouldn't have forgotten and blah, blah. story, 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 story. But the story is not a good story. It's not a happy ending, positive growth mindset. Never mind what this is what we'll do instead story. It's 
a story filled with doom and gloom and disaster and things going wrong that just demonstrate your inadequacy, your lack of capacity, capability, competence, self-worth. You get the picture. And that's contributing to developing and, and strengthening the, the negative, I call them negative neural pathways. It doesn't mean you're a negative person. It's just the unsupportive, unhelpful neural pathways that elevate levels of cortisol and adrenaline, trigger your primitive emotional brain to leap into all kinds of fight or flight uh, behaviors and thought processes. And the more you do that, cortisol, I learned this when I was training, cortisol makes you stupid. Cortisol dulls your critical faculties because and with good reason, because when we're triggered into fight or flight, our brain and our body does not require us to overthink a solution. Our brain and our body requires us to do something and do something now. Any slowing down of that process could mean we don't survive the event. And so cortisol is really valuable. It clouds all of that jump and goes, and they're just focus, focus here, focus, focus muscles, body, heart, breathe, do what you need to do, get out. But we're not in fight or flight, we're not really in a dangerous situation, but that cortisol is clouding our judgment, is fogging our brain so that we can't think clearly. And then when we can't think clearly, we, we tell another dreadful story about that it's like oh you know I used to be able to do this I used to be able to remember I used to be able to you know not even keep a diary I could just remember everything in my head and I could juggle everything and we use a comparative judgment about ourselves which embeds and strengthens that initial neural pathway that is not serving us and the more we travel down that pathway and we turn it around and we add a another level of the story of oh goodness if that happens that means this and then that means that and and it's not good it's all bad and it's that's when it's feeding on itself and that's why I often I most often describe it as this vortex this negative vortex because it is like a whirlpool or a whirlwind that it sucks you down and down and down deeper into the problem and if you imagine that's you know these pathways in your mind which go everywhere and anywhere you know there's a billions and trillions of them and they also have a magnificent purpose but you're creating a stronger pathway a deeper rut of this one that's not really serving you so that's what goes on in your brain which is why you don't want to be doing that, which is why when I say a problem shared can be a problem doubled, it's how often you're sharing it. Not the fact that you're sharing it, but how often you're sharing it. And the reason this came to mind, so I've talked about this stuff for more than a decade now, working with people in um, situations of anxiety. But what I've noticed recently with menopause anxiety is that we've stepped into that wonderful place of going oh thank goodness it's not just me we're sharing the problem so we get that initial rush of um reassurance of comfort of ease of oh of exhalation of oh thank goodness thank goodness i, I it's not just me i'm not going mad um, other people are experiencing this and there's that initial oh I can get through this I can get through this which is where that whole power of sharing where we feel suddenly in that moment more capable more competent more supported and actually you know we feel that support for ourselves so there's the benefit that's why we do it but what I am also seeing as the conversation continues, obviously new women are coming into the space and having that initial, oh, oh thank goodness, feeling. That's, you know, that's what this community is about, is about that 
thank goodness it's not just me, maybe that's what I should have called it, instead of menopause, anxiety, freedom. Um, so we get that, but then it's what happens next that matters. And I'm beginning to see a little too much of the kind of getting into the mud and wallowing in it. And this, please don't read this wrong. I'm not saying going back to the old, right, just pull yourself together. All right, well, you've got it off your chest now. Now pull yourself together, get up, get back out there. That's not it. I'm thinking in terms of how your neural pathways work, what you need to do to start stopping the downward spiral and begin to create new pathways that bring you up and out using your own resources. So I'm not saying I just get over it, put yourself together, because we've been there, we've done that. However, let me use an analogy that might have more weight. You know, it, well, even if you've never been divorced, like we've all had relationships which have gone really wrong. Like we, they've been the relationships that we thought were going to be amazing and they weren't. For whatever reason, we got ourselves badly hurt, burned, heartbroken, whatever it was, and we feel crushed and we feel grief stricken. And, it, it, you know, it could be a divorce. It could be a relationship breakdown. It could even be the death of someone close to you. And we understandably and justifiably and rightly sink into that for a while. We kind of need that that grieving, like, let, let me just pull the covers over for a while. I, I just need to withdraw. And there's nothing wrong in that. And I think what I'm seeing with menopause anxiety, if I link it, if I give myself permission to do this, because, hey, I'm the only person here giving myself permission. But um, I saw something the other day where someone talked about uh, how they were bemoaning the loss of estrogen because estrogen plays the part in mitigating the negative effects of cortisol was, was the gist of how they'd expressed it. So I've just talked about cortisol and they've read up and they're very knowledgeable, very um, articulate, very capable, very competent, nothing wrong at all with their brains. There's nothing wrong with your brain either, by the way. Um, but they've made this, they said, oh, you know, this problem where my mood is going up and down and one minute I just feel like I want to climb into the hole and not come out, just leave me, just wait for this all to pass, fight, flight or play dead, play dead. And in that moment, I understand that, it's like it's all your fault, estrogen. It's all your fault, menopause. You caused this and I hate you or you make me mad. So we move from that state of the relationship breakdown. We go from sadness and grief and, you know, wishing it was better into anger, which is a good thing. And then the natural process with the eventually we would come out of it in some way. We would either, you know, if it's someone that we've lost through, through death we would come out of it just eventually beginning to be able to appreciate all the wonderful times we'd spent with them. And yes, sometimes we'd feel sad, but it would not dominate our entire lives. We would find a way to keep living and we would probably find great reasons as we think about them for living, you know, what they would have wanted, how they would have enjoyed this moment. You know, we can find wonderful ways to move forwards which is not negating the fact that they've gone but finding a fresh impetus for life in a in a different way because we can't have it the way we did have it we have to find a different way and on the whole as human beings we're incredibly resilient incredibly good at doing this stuff sorry just checking the time there because i know when i'm i'm in flow we're okay for time but, and so even, and then if it's a relationship breakdown, yes, we go through that misery, that sadness, and then we might get angry, and then we, we think we describe the person like in many negative terms, which may be valid or not valid, but it really doesn't matter because they're not there to hear what we're saying. 
So we get it all out of our system. And, and maybe sometimes we, we do. We, you see the difference between someone that goes through that process and then comes out to the other side and moves on. So they're not quashing the experience. They're not denying the experience. They're not negating any of the emotion that they felt through that experience but they're processing it allowing it to happen and then they're going okay right it's time for me to move on now and stepping in to a different version of life maybe stepping into a fabulous new relationship job experience place that they live whatever but finding something new for them starting again that is the normal natural cycle of life it's it's how we live, it, you know, not just as human beings, you know, as, as physical living beings, the cycle of life and death, whether that's genuine death or relationship death, is, is you know, that's how it works. We go through that process and we come out the other side and we choose. But we also either personally know or we witness, maybe third hand, second hand, People who do not move out of that state of either anger or grief, where they stay stuck and they go over and over and over the story in their mind, that original story where nothing went right, nothing ever would go right. And it says something about them or somebody else. And they're like a record stuck on repeat. And for those of us with just in that generation that you remember records, how they would stick sometimes in the needle would get stuck in a certain place. And this saying just about has resonance for this age group. And it would go over and over and over one tiny piece. And you'd have to push the needle on because it, otherwise it was never going to go anywhere. It would play the same piece of the track. And we see people that do that and they are deepening diving deeper down into that vortex, deepening the ruts of the, the negative neural pathways that aren't serving them and creating a place where they are more and more stuck. And, you know, I'll just share a quick story from, from my own life of an, of an example of, of this. I mean, maybe you had it, but maybe you're not. Perhaps you're much more sympathetic to me. But I can remember when my brother got divorced, which is a long, long, long time ago, and he, he has moved on now. It's all fine. But there was a period when, you know, he would be on the phone and he, he needed to talk, and it was fine, you know, and I was there. But, you know, you reach that point when you go, okay, I've heard this. Like, are you going to ring me up and, and say anything else? Are you going to move on? Are you really going to keep on ringing me with the same story? Just, just, and in the end, you want to distance yourself from that person because you know that if you don't, if you allow them to keep doing that, it's not good for them because you're fueling the fans of that particular fire you're throwing it more oxygen more, more fuel go on keep on keep on the, it, if we allow that we can make the problem worse for someone and we can also join them in the problem and I know a lot of I see this there's a risk in this with menopause anxiety when we get that oh, thank goodness it's not just me and then we meet some people virtually or in reality who share our experience and we then dive into the same vortex we're now in the same pool and we're circling around one another and we're dragging one another down like drowning people pulling the savior down so you can no longer save that person because they are now pulling you under and that's the risk and that's why a problem shared can be a problem doubled or trebled or quadrupled or worse. And so I urge you in this community to, you know, come to these events or, or reach out to one another, share the stuff that's really causing you problems. But then 
you know, reach a point. I don't mean immediately your timing is different to my timing is different to somebody else's timing. It's, you know, why when I'm working with people, I'm working on their timing, their journey. It's not right. Like, here's the pace. Right. You just sorry. You got off the pace a bit there, love. No. You do have to navigate your own way and it is your way and it, it can be like a really rocky road. But there comes a point where you want to step into that away from here's how bad it all is. It's all the fault of oestrogen. It, you know, like the relationship thing. Oh, he was always a shit. It's all his fault. This went wrong. He always did X, Y, Z, never did A, B, C. You know, we blame everything that's going wrong on a specific person because it's easier. We put the blame outside of us, then we can't do anything, but that's disempowering. That leaves us trapped. And so we need to move away from, you know, being angry with menopause and blaming estrogen for not having, you know, enough serotonin, for having too much cortisol, and go, well, hang on a minute. As you come through that, what other ways, because there are other ways, could I, you know, what else helps me produce serotonin? and lowers levels of cortisol. What else other than estrogen could help me here? And that's where people like me and others come in and play the role of getting you out of the rut into a different, you know, creating a new pathway that's kind of, oh, it's all a bit overgrown at the moment. You don't really know where it's going. Ah, but resourcing because you do have the resources even though that story is telling you you're lost you don't know what you're doing anymore you're incompetent incapable forgetful brain's gone it isn't entirely true now you see because i forgot the whole the whole gist of this event was that i forgot the time and that i hadn't created an event so it doesn't mean that you never get some of the symptoms that you had before but it means you become more at ease with it it's like well so what what happened what how did that really matter consequentially to the future of the planet to the future of my life and well-being to your life and well-being i've created a recording and it does actually say recording this time and i've done that before it's about acquiring a new way of thinking of resourcing yourself differently and going, okay, so that path, that relationship with estrogen, <laughs> potentially, you know, if you're on HRT, then it's a bit of a different story. It's not the entire solution. We'll go there another day. But that relationship, let's imagine, is done. Like it was great. We had some good times, but it's now done. Now I need to find myself again. And there's that whole grasping and wandering through the dark and not knowing what's there for you but eventually finding your feet again and discovering that maybe what's on the other side of this when you can let go of the anger and the hurt about losing your estrogen is other ways of doing things that might actually be more beneficial to your long-term well-being and the transformation of your life, not just from how do I cope, but, but how do I, how do I live? How do I live and discover who I am again? Which is why I changed the name of my program from Crisis to Freedom, which is a bit uh, Crisis to Freedom, really, to return to self. It's a return, a return to something that you think you've lost. Um, but better than that, it's, it's discovering that that thing you thought you'd lost is even more amazing than, than you thought it was in the first place. And I'm just looking at something here, which is not mine. I'm just going to share with, this with you as I close. I had my branding phot photography done last week. And my photographer sent me this lovely message. And I think it's kind of appropriate. Oh, uh, hang on. Can't see it, can we? Ha <laughs> ha. Whoopsie daisy. You can't read that at all. I'm going to have to read it for you. Uh, downside of the background it says dream big shine bright so i shall leave you with that nice little message and 
if you watch well, if you're watching this on the replay, you will be watching this on the replay. Comment, share your thoughts. Does this make sense? Um, does it not make any sense? Do you want to reach out to me? Do you want to have a conversation about it? Do you want to just get in touch and, and formulate some relationships with people in the group who would probably be delighted if you just messaged and said, hi, I see you're a member of the group too. You know, just, just a little gentle, tentative, hello. That could be a good step for you, a, a kind of brave step of, oh, you know, that social thing that because we withdraw from social engagement, do we not? So maybe that could be the first little scary step, or maybe the first scary step would be reaching out to me. But whatever it is, just think about what I shared with you about a problem shared once, really great. Twice, mm, okay, three times, or, or four, five, six, up, uh, stop, stop. It's making it worse. So stop blaming everything on estrogen. Stop bemoaning that life will never be the same again. Start looking for other ways because estrogen is not your only savior. Okay, lecture over. Now you see, that's what happens when I don't get people in the room. I get onto my soapbox, but I hope this has proved useful and helpful. And uh, I wish you a brilliant rest of the day. Uh, last week of August, so hopefully next month we'll be back into the swing of things. We'll have more of you showing up. I will have some lovely guests. And um, yeah, have a great day. Speak to you soon. Lots of love. Bye.